Okay, um, I'm going to use this video to show you some of the results I've had, some of the best, um, and talk about what I think makes a harmonograph really good. The stack I have on top are some of my favorites. I had them rolled up for safety. This one is probably one of my favorites so far, just because it's tight, it's different, it's green. This was um, green uniball which I'll show you in the next video, on um, cover stock paper, so it's a little heavier. And it's just, uh, I don't know, just got everything right on this one, I guess. It's like, it's smooth and simple, but when you look, it's got these really cool stacked, it's the stacked curves, kind of like a topo surface, and then like a nice dense middle, and again, that window screen effect in there which is really cool. That's one of my one of my favorites. See, I got this whole green series. Everything was going right for me that night. That one's a little sharper. Here's just a blob. I like it. He's an oddball. I don't know how that happened. And I got some sharper ones. You can see it's kind of interesting. The machine isn't symmetric. See, this end has a curl over and this end is a point. I think that's because, just because of the geometry, not everything's the same length. It wasn't really designed, I just kind of adjusted as necessary. See this one's got a cool curl in the center. Another thing that I find really interesting is that with circles, look at this, straight line, nearly. This side too. And straight lines show up everywhere in these things, which is really cool and weird because you'd think Combining sine waves wouldn't give you straight lines, but they do. Look at the window screen effect in here. Beautiful. Uh, you guys might have seen some of these earlier. Oh, that's my. Here's one. Uh, this is one I showed you at the beginning. One of my new favorites. This is just on crappy paper, which is too bad because this is a display piece in my mind. You can see you got the nice window screening there. Really cool center. And nice dark, nice dark lines. This was just for the Bic on 20 pounds, regular copy paper. So those are some of the best. Um, to give you a scale for how long it took me to get to this point, this is the stack since winter. <laughs> you can see, I mean, these are all, most of them are double-sided. There's a small one in there. Oh, jeez. And there's something wrong with most of these. And by something wrong, I mean I can see something wrong with them, which is a problem. Um, see the early ones are kind of spaced out. Some different colors going on here. Some weird stuff. Experimenting. This shouldn't be in here. But I mean, just the the time it takes to get to get to where you are. There's a cool one. Um, and it's funny how subjective it is to for someone to say that's a good harmonograph or not. But things I look for are um, close line spacing, close enough that it looks like an image. See, this line spacing's farther, but it's dark. That's not a bad one. Um, and line spacing is related to frequency, how fast your phase is changing. And depending on just the, the phase everything's in, we'll change that too. I like to see these convergence points. You can see where everything goes through one point. And I think that's really interesting that it does that. Um, Another qualification of good ones, you can't see where you started or ended. And this one, I think it's right there, but your average person wouldn't be able to tell that. And the end, obviously, is somewhere in the black center, which is really good. You can't see the lead in or lead out. And um, some more characteristics, I like to see this stacked progression. And it changes with the phase change. 
from the frequency. So if you have much, um, if you have a big variation between your frequencies, it'll move faster, but you won't get good line spacing. So there's kind of a trade-off there between how tight and dense your drawing is and how interesting it is, because you can do one. I'm not going to be able to pull out an example, but see like these progressed faster, so they did more things as they turned, but the line spacing is very good. That's actually a cool one. That's a nice one. <laughs> I haven't really gone through these since I did them. Um, a note just about the amount of these here. It's almost, it's much, I don't know, much easier. These are the smaller ones from my old 3 Pendulum. And this gave me pretty good results, pretty pretty quick. Um, so if you're starting off, you know, look at that. If you're starting off, it might be better to do a 3 Pendulum just so you start seeing results. Um, it's definitely discouraging, but again, you know, the the search for that perfect picture is definitely a draw to keep doing it. And I've spent quite a bit of time. And you just kind of learn how your machine works and what phase you need to be and experiment with different frequencies. And it's you, you start to get a feel for the pictures you're going to draw before you do it, which is cool. Um, I guess that's about it for results. Showed you some good ones. Next video is about paper and pens. So stay tuned.